My new book is Everything I Ever Needed to Know About Economics I Learned from Online Dating. I re-entered the dating market a couple of years ago, and in the intervening time where I'd been out of the market, two pretty dramatic things had happened. One was the, inter the rise of the internet. So when I went back to the dating world, it was completely different than it had been before. And the second thing was I'd become an economist. And so the combination of those two things, as I began to go into the online dating world, I couldn't help but think of it as a market. It is a market. It's one of the most interesting markets out there, and there's just so much economics going on there. So when we say thick markets, we mean markets with a lot of participants. So if you go to a mall with a lot of different stores and a lot of different goods and a lot of different shoppers, you're going to find everybody's more likely to get what they want than if you go to an individual small store in the middle of nowhere. Well, by the same token, when you're thinking about what types of how to, how to approach the dating market, you want to go where the dates are. And so you want to think about, okay, I want to get on the biggest websites, or do I want to sometimes think about getting on a more specialized website that has, that's big, maybe not as big, but has more of the types of people I want. So the idea behind signaling is we have to find a way where when I say to you, I really want to go on a date with you, you believe me without thinking that I've said this to 100 other people. And so in, there are a lot of mechanisms in real life where we figured out ways to do that. In college applications, we have early decision and early action programs where you signal to the college, you're my favorite choice. And the way I've proven that to you is I'm only allowed to say it to one college. Well, the dating market would be one thing that might enhance the dating market and the job market. I think this would be a very good thing for Monster.com and the like is to have people be able to send one or two messages a month that say, I really want to date you, and this is my only I really want to date you message I'm allowed to send this month. There are a couple of things that have already been done to improve the online dating market in some places. One of them is a lot of websites have, not in the United States that I know of, but in foreign countries, I know of websites in China, Britain and Korea at least where this is true, you have to send in verification of certain things that you say. So when you claim a certain income, they verify your income. When you claim a certain height, they verify your height and so forth. So that's one way to improve the situation because many dates are wasted on people who tell lies that are quickly figured out. The empirical evidence that people lie on their dating profiles is very strong. They don't tell big whoppers of a lie because the minute you meet the person, you know it's a lie. But men tend to exaggerate their height and their income. Women tend to um, report slightly lower ages and weights. I wouldn't tell you to lie, but you do have to keep in mind that a lot of people out there are shading the truth in their favor. And so you have to keep, you have to remember that you don't want to lie, but a lot of the competition is. And a lot of the people you're likely to meet are going to turn out to be um, slightly different than, than they've led, them, led you to believe based on their profiles. I like to believe a good understanding of economics can help you a lot in many different contexts. It can make you a better business person. That's what I do every day, trying to teach MBAs about economics to make them more efficient. And I think understanding economics can help you in the online dating market because it tells you what types of markets to think about, how to present yourself a little bit. But I, I would not argue that economics is the only thing that's going to make you successful.